judge between peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Welcome to our service for Remembrance Sunday. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. Let us pray. Almighty God, our minds and hearts are with those who will gratefully and enthusiastically join in the wave of remembrance sweeping across our nation this week. In unity with all Canadians of every race, gender, and creed, we offer up prayers of thanksgiving for all those who have made selfless sacrifices for God and country so that we and future generations might live in peace. Bring your comfort and relief to those who mourn. Enable those who were wounded in body, mind, or spirit to live more peaceful and satisfying lives. Endow us all with a new resolve to hasten that day when war shall be no more and your will alone is done on all the earth. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer. Amen. Amen. let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong 
and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth, mouth shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. praise. O God, make speed to save us. O, o Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. us. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy I kingdom come. come. Thy I will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Lord, us this day our daily bread, and forgive Lord, us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 46, and we'll uh, read it responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, Therefore we will not fear, fear though, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The first reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 
He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, beginning at the 37th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. What does God know of war? What does God know of the chaos that erupts from the conflict between nations and peoples? Well, as it turns out, getting a handle on chaos is something at which God is quite adept. I read a Celtic prayer the other day that went like this. In the beginning, O God, your spirit swept over the chaotic deep like a wild wind, and creation was born. I thought back to the creation stories. In the book of Genesis, God's first act upon this earth was to tackle chaos and replace it with order. It makes me think of the hymn, Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. All God had to do was say the word, and chaos was on the run. Several years ago, I was traveling in northern France and ended up visiting not one, not two, but five war memorials and cemeteries. Three Canadian, one American, and one German. It wasn't exactly the itinerary I had imagined when I was planning the trip, but my traveling companions had definite plans that differed from my own. As it turned out, those visits left quite an impression on me, and I'm grateful we went. One of the places we went to see was the World War II Memorial Cemetery just above Omaha Beach in Normandy where the American troops landed as part of the largest Allied advance into German-occupied territory. The memorial was elaborate, to say the least. 
There was a large pond surrounded by a semicircle of tall, majestic pillars of concrete and a uniquely designed chapel. And as far as the eye could see were row upon row upon row of pure white crosses lined up in perfect symmetry on perfectly manicured grass and under perfectly sculptured trees. It was a grand symbol of victory and triumph. It was crowded with tourists and without a doubt a moving experience, and yet there was also a feeling of being in a place that had been whitewashed of the chaos that it was meant to represent. A day later, we found ourselves close to the Belgian border. There we came across the Beaumont Hamel War Memorial, an historic site set aside to pay tribute to the Newfoundland Regiment who fought in one of the bloodiest military battles in history, the Battle of the Somme. It was an offensive attack destined for failure. Of the 800 Newfoundland men sent into battle on July 1st, 1916, only 68 answered roll call the next day. The rest were wounded or dead. In less than one day, the tiny nation of Newfoundland was robbed of a generation of young men. The assault had been doomed from the beginning. The men didn't receive the artillery cover they were promised, nor was the barbed wire cut when they reached the front line. And there were no plans or resources to bring back the wounded as they fell on the battlefield. Within a few short years of the war, and in part through fundraising efforts of Newfoundland mothers and sisters and wives. Land for the memorial at Beaumont Hamel had been purchased from the French farmers. From the moment I stepped into that space, I knew this war memorial was different than the others. There are no rows of whitewashed crosses in Beaumont Hamel. No cement pond or pillared structures built as memorials to the fallen soldiers. There are only trenches, bombed out craters, and the uneven ground that had turned to mud under the soldiers' boots. The land was left just as it was when the Newfoundland Regiment launched their attack that fatal day. The goal of this memorial was not to cover up the chaos of that battle. It was not to proclaim victory, nor to whitewash the evil and pain, the loss of life and hope that war inflicts on this world. This memorial recognized the need for humankind to face the reality of the chaos that comes with conflict. That's why the marks of war and sacrifice were left to stand, why the memory of the chaos was not erased. But something else can be found in this national historic site, something that reminds me of the God whose spirit swept over the chaotic deep like a wild wind and creates again. You see, the trenches and mortar holes and muddy fields are now covered with a thick green blanket of grass and surrounding the whole battlefield are 5,000 trees and shrubs native to Newfoundland planted almost a hundred years ago by a nation mourning the tragic loss of their sons. 
The strength of this war memorial lies not in its ability to whitewash the chaos of war and its destructive force. The strength of this memorial reminds us how the hand of God's Spirit can and will restore peace and healing even when disorder and destruction swirls around them. Like Beaumont Hamel, Remembrance Day assures us that we do not forget about the deep trenches war causes in building relationships and maintaining justice, the giant craters it makes in family life, and the destruction of the pathways that nurture compassion and trust. But Remembrance Day is also a call to something more, something that only God's Spirit can bring about, and that is replacing the chaos with order and peace. I want to end with the image that the prophet Micah painted for us in his writings. The nations will hammer their swords into plows and their spares, spears into pruning knives. Blacksmiths work hard at what they do. It takes no small effort on their part to forge metal into instruments of war. Picture the sweat pouring off the blacksmith as he hammers and shapes his piece of metal into the blade of a sword or the point of a spear. But Micah calls us to rethink this image. Picture the blacksmith taking that sword and that spear and melting them down in the heat of his forge and bringing down his hammer once again, this time to shape a plow or a sickle for the farmland. As I pictured the blacksmith pounding on his metal and shaping it through brute force, I sensed a truth that I had missed in these words of Micah, that it takes as much sweat and muscle power to forge an instrument of peace as it does to forge an instrument of war. May God's Spirit sweep over each one of us and every nation on earth that in facing the pain and terror of our past, we may, looking forward, put as much effort into our instruments of order and peace as we have put into our instruments of chaos and war. For Jesus comes and stands among us and says, Peace be with you. Amen.
Let us pray. Father of all, we pray to you for those we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict, for men and women who have died in the violence of war, for the injured and the disabled, the mentally distressed, the homeless and the refugee each one a child of God. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for those left behind, for those who live with the distress of their grief and the sadness of their loss. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. For those whose faith in God and humanity has been weakened or destroyed by the atrocities of war. For those who do not value the precious gift of human life, God, give them peace. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious. Guide them in the way of righteousness and give them the gifts of wisdom and resolve as they search for reconciliation and peace. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for our diocese. Give our bishop and all church leaders the wisdom and insight and strength to serve your holy people, that we may worship you in spirit, in truth, and in action. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. We pray for those who are ill in a hospital or at home or undergoing treatments. May your healing spirit give them the strength to bear their illnesses with grace and not to lose hope in the face of despair. May we stand beside them with patience and compassion in their hour of need. We remember Francis, Catherine S., Jeremy, Esther, Brenda, Kirkland, Martin, Cynthia, Bonnie, Isabel M., Louise, Nancy, Lorraine, Lorna, and Gary. Lord, hear our cry as we pray for peace in our hearts and peace in our world. 
O oh God, where hearts are fearful and limited, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. Lord Jesus, as we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. our leaders, our country of Canada, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. 
Now, with the strength you have been given, go simply, lightly, gently, in search of love and peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.